welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. I am your visibility and transformation coach. And today we're talking about energy transformation. And I wanted to start today with a story of my transformational journey and how I know that I have made the shift from being where I was to where I am today. And so my transformation started by me not really loving myself, not really liking the person I was in the mirror. And it started by me being put in a school where I was the only black girl in the school and I didn't know any English, I didn't know anyone. And so that forced me to adapt. That forced me to become this version of myself that allowed other people to come to me. And what I learned as a young child was if I was smiling and happy, I attracted a lot of friends. So I became smiley, happy, and a people pleaser in order to fit in and belong and feel good about myself, right? Fast forward to now I'm an adult and I am married to my husband. I am traveling. I'm looks like I'm having fun to the outside world. My life looks fantastic. Even now to this day, they're like, you've transformed. Like you've always been this person, but what it is, is the face that I was putting out into the world versus the person that was behind closed doors. was completely different. I didn't put out the parts of me that weren't pretty. I put out the parts that were beautiful for the world to see, because I thought that's what they could handle. That's what they could consume. That just left me feeling not great inside. And it felt like I wasn't being myself. And so I went on this journey. And what I've learned is my tendencies, which was to hide my true self, was, was to not tell the truth to even myself of what it was I really wanted or who I really was or whose I really was. Like I used to believe there was a man in the sky playing puppet master with my life. But what my journey has taught me is that that is not the truth. There is a power greater than me, greater than all of us that is within each of us that's created us to be miracles in this world. And when we're willing to look within ourselves, that is when the transformation begins. In my transformation, I went from wanting to please everybody, saying yes when I wanted to say no, to setting healthy boundaries for myself. Like say no, because I care about myself. Say no from a place of fullness and love. And what I learned from setting those boundaries was that the people that I set those boundaries with found their people that were able to help them better than I ever could. They found their yes because of my no. And also what I did is my relationships with my family, with my friends have become exceptional. I went on this transformational journey, on this growth journey to discover who I am. And that has been the ripple effect in my family. And I think that is my biggest most best accomplishment is the fact that I didn't just grow myself. I grew and I went back and talked and spoke about my transformation and helped my family in the process. And so I say we can't grow alone. We have to grow together, but the transformation has to start with you. You have to be willing to bloom. And what that means to bloom to me, it means to shed the old and to allow in what it is that you truly want. You have to have faith which the best acronym for faith I've ever heard is to fully anticipate it to happen. And what comes up when you decide to go on this transformation and be different and show up differently and be the person that you know you could be is frustration, irritation. Your body, your mind just starts to go crazy because it's like, we're not used to this. This is not normal. This is not the way we are. And so I want to tell you that's normal. That's normal for your mind and your body to freak out when you decide to transform, when you decide to go all in on your next level and what you want. But as you're transforming, you also have to honor the person that you are today, right where you're at right now. 
because we look forward and we see this vision that we have for ourselves, this vision that we have for the future, and that is the goal. So we're going and we're going and we're going. But then what's happening is we're neglecting the very person that is sitting right here in this chair. And so we have to honor where we are. We have to honor the truth. And that is why I have called the program, the eight week intensive, shatter the box and bloom, because we are in a self-imposed box right now. In order to get to that next level, in order to bloom into your next best, you have to shatter the box. And how you shatter the box is going within, asking yourself what it is that you truly want, what you truly care about. Who are you? Who am I? Those are the questions that starts to honor you and the person that you are today. And so for me, the biggest thing I value is my family. So I knew that when I went on this journey that I had to take them with me. And what I've come to find that that's not very common for when people to transform, to bring the people they love with them. It seems that a lot of things that are, it seems from what I've seen, my perspective of it is that when people are growing, that they're losing the people that they care about because they change, they become a new person. They became a new paradigm. But what I did was as I was growing, I was explaining what I was doing. I was explaining the process and my family and I, my husband and I, we've the closest we've ever been. So that is my biggest, greatest accomplishment as I went through this evolution for myself and how I help, I help women, misfits, healers, beautiful mamas to transform themselves from the inside out. And what I found is embodiment is the way to do it. Because for years I did the counseling. I, <laughs> I went to counseling. I did books. I did courses. I did all the things. And it wasn't until I started tapping into my body that I started to really realize what it is that I do. For me, it was running away. <laughs> I would run away at the quickest sign of conflict. If it didn't feel good, I would buy a, a ticket <laughs> out of here <laughs> or just walk away. It's like there's the freeze, fight, and flight. And for me, it was I would literally just flight, just leave, dip out. And what I realized is that wasn't healthy for me. That wasn't healthy for me to be always running, always hiding. And so by getting a little bit deeper into the body, I was able to soothe myself. I was able to calm those parts of me that wanted to run. I was able to sit with the parts of me that were fearful. And so with embodiment, I want to give you a taste for it today. So if you're in a place and you are ready to drop in and get a taste of what it is to be embodied, what it is to become the thing that you want, what it is to feel fully connected to yourself, I'm just going to ask you to take a few breaths here and just start to welcome yourself home. And that just means that you feel your bum on the chair, you feel your feet on the ground, your breath in your lungs, your belly is rising and falling. And you can keep your eyes open for this, or you can also close your eyes. <sighs> and you just start to relax. And you start to be fully present here. And once you're fully present, just start to pay attention to the sensations in the room, the sensations on your body, the sounds in the room. When you're present, all the things that you couldn't hear before become very, very loud. <laughs> and you can hear them, the sensations. You can pay attention to them. So do you feel any heat on your body? Do you feel any coolness? What about the breath going in your nose? Now we're going to go ahead and feel the length of our body. So from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. And this is our esteem. This is how we take up space in the world. And we're not judging it if we're not sitting up as tall as we'd like. We're just witnessing. We're just paying attention to what our body is doing right now. And then we're going to go to the width from our side body to our side body, feeling our clothes on our bodies. And this is our belonging. This is our boundaries. This is where we decide if we're going to keep people out or if we're going to keep people in. This is where we contract. And we're not judging it either. Again, we're just paying attention. We're just being the witness here. And then we're going to go back to our back bodies. This is where our back is touching the chair. <sighs> and our back bodies are past. It's everything that we have lived up to this point. All the parts of us that we have either shamed, all the parts of us that we have forgotten all the parts of us that got us to where we are today, the tenacious, the determined. There's also the fear back here. Mm, that inner child is back here. That rebunctious teenager is back here. And also your, gener your lineage, generations after generations is all back here. And all of that is pushing you forward. All the people that have shown up for you in your life up to this point, all the times you've been supported up to this point, is all in your back body. So there's goodness here. There is life here worthy of our attention. Yes, it's the past. 
And the famous quote is, let the past die, let the past go. But I truly believe it's only by visiting the past. It's only by willing to be the witness of the past and finding the lessons that we're able to heal and move to the future and move forward, move on to our purpose. And so as we breathe through and we come to our front body, and this is where we're going, this is the destination, this is the goal, this is the vision and the mission that's pulling us forward. This is the excitement, the future that we can't stop dreaming about. (laughs) This is where we ask ourselves, what does it look like? Who is with us? What are we doing? What's the feeling? And then we come back to our body now. And again, we feel our bum on the chair. We drop our breath down to below our belly button, which is our center. And we are here with ourselves now. And we just witness ourselves here now. And we can ask ourselves the question, what is important to me right now? What is the one step I can take forward today based on visiting my past? visiting my future. What is one thing I can do today to move forward? Then we get quiet, paying attention to our center below our belly button. Whatever answer comes, sometimes it's super simple. (laughs) Whatever answer comes for you, write it down. Write it down. That's your message from you, from yourself. I would love to know how that experience served you. So embodiment for me, the work of embodiment is integrating all the parts of who we truly are. Like that short journey that we just took together where we went to our back body and our front body and we connected with our true self. Sometimes we live in chaos and it forces us to completely disconnect from our bodies and we are not here. We're just kind of in our head, just moving through the motion and we're moving through the motion fiercely. (laughs) And thinking that is what it's going to take for us to get forward is if we just keep thinking, if we keep forcing ourselves to do things that we're going to get them done. But as I was talking about yesterday, we do things because we feel like it. And so if you can connect with yourself and ask yourself, what is it that you want? What is it that you desire? And what is it that you would like to feel? Then all of you becomes part of the solution. All of you becomes part of the equation. So that's what embodiment does. It helps you become the person that you most want to be. You are embodying it. You are fully in it, walking, living, breathing. I want to take a moment to talk about the the weakness turned into strength. So as I was telling you earlier that we, but for me, I was people pleasing. That was the way I chose to be able to adapt into my situation, people pleasing. And so I took that for years as how can I change that? How can I get rid of that? How can I not be a people pleaser? And that's, has served me for so long. It got me so far in life, but it was really hard to really shed that and let that go until I started looking at it as a strength that I was able to really use it. And the strength that I gave it was that shift shifting. So that became my superpower. It meant that I could adapt to any situation. It means that I can speak to anyone. As a hairstylist and an educator for 10 years, I worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of women and men over 10,000 hours. And I've traveled, I've traveled to Southeast Asia. I've traveled in the States. I can speak and talk to anyone and I can try new things because I'm willing to. And myself, I'm open to it all. So people pleasing means I'm open to new ways of being. I'm open to new stories. I'm open to hearing people out. And then my podcast, my Make Life Fun podcast, I'm able to talk to guests and really listen and hear their stories. So what is your perceived weakness that you need to transform and write a new story about? What needs to be your superpower from your perceived weakness? So for me, it's just showing up and being me using my voice, knowing that magic can happen just by me being in the room. I can be light. I can be playful. What are your superpowers? I would love to know. Have you ever heard the story about when you put a fish in a fishbowl? It can only get as big as that fishbowl versus when it's in the ocean and it's able to get as big as it wants because it has more space. It's the same thing with us. The environment we allow ourselves to be in, we can only grow so much past that environment. So when you're transforming and you're wanting to be a different version of yourself, you have to expand and put yourself in a different environment because what that's going to do for you is that's going to change your vibration. That's going to change your energy. And when we talk about vibration and energy, everything is vibration. Everything is energy. Everything is constantly moving. And so when we're in a high vibration, we're feeling calm, we're feeling joy, we're feeling peace, we're feeling ease. 
And it's not just emotionally, but it's mentally and physically as well. And it's easier for us to do the things that we want to do. And so when we're in a community where everybody is showing up and vibing high and going after what they want, it pushes us forward. It pulls us forward and it keeps us wanting to rise up and meet that vibration. So the lower vibrations are going to be your stress, your anxiety, your worry, your overthinking. And these lower energies leave you depleted and tired. And you definitely do not feel like doing the things that you want to do. And so that's why it's so important to work on your energy first thing in the morning, right when you wake up. What is it that you enjoy doing? Is it a workout? Is it a meditation? Is it a song or music that you play? What is it that gets you going first thing in the morning so that you can raise that vibration? Because as your energy rises, you find clarity, you find understanding. Whereas if you're in a lower vibration and you wake up already ho-hum, then throughout the day, you're having more confusion. You're more overwhelmed. You're more stressed out. And so if you can start your day with that boost, that lift of, of energy, of vibing higher by doing something that you enjoy. So with everything in the universe moving and shifting and vibrating, what that means is that we can meet it. We can meet the vibration of the things that we want. Energy is not created or destroyed. So the energy of what you want is there. So if it's wealth, and abundance that you want, there's an energy for wealth and abundance. And wealth and abundance is a high energy. Joy is a high energy. So it's our work to tap in as often as we possibly can. And I recommend first thing in the morning, tapping into that energy, however way that it works for you. You can do that through play, through fun, through laughter, dancing, singing, watching something funny, being out in nature, doing things you enjoy, like cooking or painting, connecting with your friends and family. Like think about the things that bring you joy because that's what's driving your action, that high energy, that joy, that feeling of wanting to do it. So yeah, I would love, love to hear what do you do to boost up your energy? Joyful anticipation is creating something that brings you to want to do the thing. We do things because we feel like it. What can you create so that when you wake up in the morning, you're pumped to get out of bed? Is it first that first cup of coffee in the morning or going outside or turning on the music? What can you prep beforehand in your mind that I'm going to wake up and this is what I'm going to do to boost myself up. So I want to introduce you to the bloom journey. So this is how I came up with the bloom journey is my transformation. And so the B in bloom is to believe. So what are you believing to be true about you? What is the story in your mind that you're saying, this is my truth. And is that belief serving you or is it blocking you? And the L in bloom is to lovingly let go, to release. Like, are you willing to let go of that story? Are you willing to see it a different way? Are you willing to release? Are you willing to find a new, more true belief? And then the O is to observe. You want to observe your thoughts. You want to observe the sensation in your body. You want to be observant and aware of yourself as the days go by so that you're fully present in your life and you're not moving through autopilot. Be the witness. And the quickest way to do that is to just be in the present moment by focusing on your breath, by feeling your feet on the ground as often as you can, as often as you remember. And so the next O is open. Can you be open to more love and compassion? First for yourself right now, right where you're at, no matter what's going on. And then the M is to magnetize. Are you willing to receive more, more joy, more fun, more excitement, more peace, more ease? Are you willing? Can you say yes to that? So as you work through the bloom journey, now you can start to embody what you're calling in. And what that does is it builds confidence and self-trust. So you're fully living it, walking it, breathing it. And you're that person. You're taking up space. You're asking for what you want. You're open to receive. And you know what you desire. You have clarity. Each time you start something new and make a new life decision, your body will freak out. Your mind will be frustrated. You will feel like an imposter. You will feel like a fraud. And that's so normal. It's something new. It's something you've never done before. So are you willing to let yourself be a beginner and feel the feelings and do it anyway? Like what we say to a child who's learning to walk, who keeps falling, you're a fraud, you're an imposter, you'll never walk. We would never do that. The imposter, the best painting for me, the best visual is like if you're trying to fit into the next size down, like a pair of jeans, and you're so close, like the buttons are right there, but you're not quite there yet. That is what happens when you're trying something new. So you have to give yourself so much grace, even though your body is freaking out, your mind is freaking out, reminding yourself that you're a beginner. I'm trying something new. It's okay for me to feel like I don't have it all. It's okay to not know all the answers. So the very thing you want, 
your body and your mind is fighting against you. And that is when you run your race. That is when you go in. That is when you search the beliefs that are keeping you stuck. That's when you observe those beliefs. You lovingly let them go. You open to more compassion for yourself and you receive what you need. And the more you do this, the easier it becomes, the more effortless it becomes. Then your setbacks, you are able to bounce back so much quicker. And this is a practice. And that's why having a community that's constantly moving in the same direction, it's constant, it's consistent, helps pull you forward. So if you had five more percent more self-esteem, what would you do today? Just five, not a hundred, just 5% more. I am worthy. I love myself. I care about myself. I am enough. I am ready for my bloom journey. What would 5% more self-esteem do for you? You can start to apply the bloom lifestyle to your everyday life by being aware and present with yourself. Again, asking yourself the question, what do I believe about the situation? Can I choose love here? What is the sensation in my body telling me? Am I willing to stay open to seeing the truth with a capital T? <laughs> what am I magnetizing to me? What are the people? What are the situations? Because our outside world definitely determines, can show us back to us as a mirror of what's going on inside. So to take up space is to use your voice in the world and to make the world a better place by speaking your truth. And this becomes a ripple effect in every area of your life. And when you start to take up space, what you have to start to do is create some boundaries. They're so important. Boundaries was a big, big thing for me. Learning to value myself and care about myself, my space, my time, my energy. So let's say we buy a brand new car. My dream car is a Lamborghini. We buy that brand new Lamborghini. What am I going to do with it? Am I just going to put it on the side of the street? Or am I going to park it in the garage? Now let's look at ourselves as that Lamborghini. Are we protecting ourselves? Are we looking out for ourselves. So this comes with putting yourself first, filling your own cup, putting on your own oxygen mask. And I know it sounds so cliche because we hear it all the time, but it's so true. When we're so filled up, when we are so taken care of and so loved, we have so much more love to give and we're natural givers. Women, we are natural givers. We overgive. We give too much of ourselves. So what we need to practice is receiving. And we're practicing that receiving from ourselves first giving to ourselves, protecting ourselves, making ourselves feel safe. So true, right? <laughs> and it's never too late to put yourself first. The thing is, you can start right now. You can say, make a decision that you're going to surround yourself with people that are putting themselves first. Surround yourself with people that are going to uplift you and celebrate you for setting boundaries. Celebrate you for saying, I love myself. I care about myself. I value myself. You are allowed to love yourself. You are enough. You are a masterpiece. You are a miracle. There will never be another like you. You have a gift to share with the world. And the gift is yours. The vision is yours. Are you willing? Are you willing to do the work for yourself? To be the best you that is already here. And stop tolerating the things that don't serve you. Stop saying yes to the things that don't serve you. And live the life that you want to live now, today making small moves every day that's creating your life. It's not a future life. It's a life right now, living it today by getting crystal clear on your dreams and your wants and your desires. That's what happens. And so today I'm going to invite you into this vibration, into this energy, into this container. Are you ready to shine your light, your own light? Are you ready to take up space? Are you ready to make your services known? Are you ready to do the thing that lights you up? The thing that you were put on this earth to do that only you can do. Do you want to break free from those mindset blocks, those barriers? Do you want to claim your power and start using your voice? Scared, trembling, armpit sweating. Are you ready? So the service that I am offering is a community, which is a new environment to practice claiming your power, taking up space, using your voice, a place to implement dropping into the body to work on the mindset blocks that are stopping you, to really visualize and vision your future and keep coming back to the truth of what it is you're, you're building, what it is that you are wanting, a place to be accountable to what you said you want. Because when you show up week after week for what you say you want, that shows the universe that you are 100% on board and the universe can't help but beat you there, can't help but get you, hold you, <laughs> As you walk that walk, you get my energy and love 
every week reminding you of the vision that you said yes to and ultimately creating a safe space for you to process your own balloon journey. Growing alone can be very lonely and there is so much power in community. It increases your chances of getting it done by 95%. When I found this out, I was like, wow, that's how you make quantum leaps. Did you get in a community of people walking the walk, doing the thing? And then you get to write your own story. You are the most powerful than all the things that you're going through right now. Your inside game is so much bigger. Like the person who you are, the power, the source within you is bigger than your problems and your circumstances. And it's your birthright to bloom no matter what your circumstances. Having a desire, a determination, and a willingness will get you where you want to go. And the world is ready for your uniqueness, what only you are able to bring to the table. You are not alone. And transformation requires so much implementation and action, consistent action, showing up every day for yourself. And what I'm willing to do is share my mistakes, the ones that I've made that blocked me, that were barriers to my growth, and be here to support you on your journey every step of the way. And this is your race, and I'm your coach to help you get there and cross the finish line. So it is an eight-week intensive container where we're going to activate your power. My job here is to offer you this transformational experience and your job is to choose. You get to choose if this is something that you want. Eight weeks to activate and claim your power and start sharing your gifts with the world where we are going to shatter the box and we're going to bloom. You're in the right place if you are desiring more. You're wanting to make big moves and take up space, but you're paralyzed with fear and is keeping you from your vision. You are a leader in the consciousness shift taking place in the world, but there's something inside of you that doesn't think you're valuable, but doesn't think you're worthy of having all your dreams come true. And you find yourself that you're dimming your light or hiding your authentic self, both in your business and your life. And most importantly, you're ready to take a stand and know that the time is now. So, so often I see people light up about sharing their life and gift the world. But they get stuck. They get stuck in resistance. And they don't show up and they don't use their voice and ask for what they want, that freezing up, the procrastination, and then not taking action. So then nothing changes. So you're unconsciously sabotaging yourself and you don't notice your accomplishments. You're not feeling proud. Again, feeling like a fraud and imposter and you're overgiving and people pleasing because you fear rejection and judgment. And believe me, I've been there. But imagine if you could wake up feeling fully activated Align with your true frequency and purpose. Comfortable taking up space and asking for what you want. Feeling proud of yourself and your achievements. Motivated to keep going towards your goal and what you care about. Worthy of feeling good and being in love with yourself, with your life. <laughs> Worthy of setting a new standard and stepping up. And you feel energetically connected to what is calling you, to your vision. You are lit up, tapped in, turned on like a Christmas tree. You're just so, so full. I'm going to share a testimonial with you. I'm walking away with coaching from, with Josie, feeling like I have confidence in the tools to achieve what it is I'm striving for in my personal and professional life. Josie has helped me taking steps towards my goal, recognizing my blocks and taking action towards moving them so I can grow. I felt so loved and supported through the experience. And that is my superpower, love. <laughs> so I want to introduce to you Shatter the Box and Bloom. It's a movement. Shatter the Box and Bloom is a live eight-week transformational intensive where I help you claim your gifts, learn how to receive true abundance, and make a meaningful impact in the world. The program takes you through a blend of practical business steps and personal transformation so you can confidently shine and get paid for what you do. Ask for the money. Receive the money. And what's included is eight weeks with me, weekly live group calls. We're going to have guest expert masterclasses. We're going to have free plays that you can keep forever. And of course, the embodiment practices and the Facebook community. And this is $888. That is what my guides have said the price is. This is my beta program. This is my first time putting this out in the world. So I am giving you the best deal I can to get you in this container where we're going to make magic happen. And there is going to be payment plans. I love this quote. The day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk took to blossom, to bloom, to become the best version of you. So as you've learned this week, I used to be a lot like you. I struggled with not feeling enough, not feeling worthy. I didn't trust myself. I didn't value myself or really like myself for that matter, truly. 
I ran away. I tried to fit in the box and blend in, showing up as myself. I didn't even know who that was. So I built an identity and it helped me survive. And through that, I got the solution. And it started by knowing myself intimately and what it is that I really want. Then finding courage to do the inner work to transform and become that person. It's a daily practice. So I'm here to tell you it's absolutely possible for you to take action and create change, to put your family first, to develop some time management, to get clarity on what it is that you truly desire, which creates more fulfillment and you find more time to do the things that matter most to you, whether that be your family, whether that be traveling, playing, dancing, singing, all the things. So my vision is for women to live and work joyfully, to be free, to communicate openly and clearly, to be empowered, to learn, grow, and also be the best that they can be for themselves first and in the world. So I'm Josie, shifted my identity, connected with my true essence, and I want to help you do the same. So I used to say life is hard. I'm a mom now. It's hard. It's going to be hard. And I had to move that belief. I had to create a whole new belief because if I kept saying that over and over again, that was exactly what I was creating. I stopped doing all the fun things. I was a COVID mom. So I was in the house away from people disconnected. And that's when I went on the journey, as I've told you guys before, to make the podcast, make life fun so that other mamas can enjoy their life, accept themselves for where they are and love themselves to life. So I've learned to let go of my old life and birth a new one. And was it easy? No, it was not. <laughs> I had to get crystal clear on what I desire my life to look like, what it wanted to feel like, who I wanted to surround myself with. And I didn't do it alone. I invested in my growth. I invested and I keep investing. And that's why I am so lit up, fired up to share everything I've learned with you, to help you transform, to help you on your own bloom journey. So in the past two years, I've coached clients to make better decisions more quickly and confidently, have belief in themselves and their abilities to achieve achieve everything that they put their mind to, to find more fulfillment in their career, to start a business, to lose weight and develop healthy lifestyle, stop drinking alcohol, reduce the hours they work so they can have more freedom. So are you ready to shatter the box in bloom? I'm inviting you to this container where we are going to love ourselves back to life. We're gonna claim back the powers. We're gonna claim back our power, our superpower. We're going to be the version of ourselves that does the thing. And I'm so excited and lit up and fired up for what is next. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're going to do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are on all podcasts places you listen. We are also on YouTube. If you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman, you can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. <laughs> and we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, yeah, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.